Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about homemaking. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Prior to becoming a mom or wife, I never even heard of the term homemaking. It wasn't until after my second baby that I heard of this term and that I fell in love with the concept. Homemaking dates back to the beginning of time. Biblically speaking, women are called to be a homemaker. When I was pregnant with my second child, household responsibilities were so aggravating and I was getting very overwhelmed with daily tasks and everything seemed like work. I was also getting frustrated because I felt like I wasn't getting enough help around the house from my spouse. I am sure that a lot of women can relate to this, so keep on listening. Once I learned about what homemaking was and the joys that can come from it, it literally turned my world around. I am a better mom and wife because I learned about homemaking and that is why I'm sharing it with you today. Being a homemaker goes way beyond just taking care of the house. It is about creating a warm and nurturing environment for our families. So in this video, I'll be sharing what it means to be a homeworker, um, a homemaker, and how I serve my family. So let's dive right in. First off, I want to define what homemaking means to me. Homemaking is the art of creating a loving and comfortable space where my family can thrive. It is about making a house feel like a home, filled with warmth and love and harmony. Have you ever walked into someone else's home and you just felt the cozy, peaceful energy? It feels good, doesn't it? And have you ever walked into someone else's home that was just very overwhelming and claustrophobic and maybe you had like a sudden anxiety? That's exactly what we want to try to avoid as homemakers. One of the primary roles of a homemaker is nurturing and caring for the family members. I strive to provide a welcoming haven where my loved ones feel safe and supported. When my husband comes home from work after a busy day, I want him to walk in the door and feel relaxed. I don't want him to walk into a space that feels chaotic and stressful. This should be a haven and an escape from the world. Um, no matter what kind of argument we had throughout the day, when he comes in the house, I want it to be a good experience and I always want to make it a good time. Um, there are going to be seasons where the house does seem a little more chaotic. For example, when we were raising a toddler and having a newborn at the same time, that's definitely a more busy time in our lives. So when he walked in the door, I did need a break and he did need to help out more. Keep in mind, just because you're a homemaker does not mean you're never able to receive uh, help and does not mean that you're never able to have a break. My children should also feel like their home is a safe spot that they have a mom who loves them unconditionally and that I'm here to help them navigate through life's ups and downs. I want them I want them to know that home is a person, not a place. So ever we so wherever we are as a family, um as long as we're together, then we're at home. We do a lot of moving and sometimes I worry that my children are not going to have like that typical childhood home. Like they're not going to be able to visit their child's at home when they grow up as an adult because we move around so much. But then I remember you can own a house and raise your kids there your entire life and it still has the potential to not feel homey. So wherever we are and whatever building we are calling home shall be free of yelling, free of fighting, free of mental and physical abuse. We are a team within these walls and we are working together and we are supporting each other. I think one of the first things that comes to mind when we think of homemaking is cleaning and organizing. And although that is so important, I purposely did not talk about it first because I think um, your family's connection and nurturing your family and caring for your family is even more important. However, as a homemaker, I do take pride in maintaining a clean and organized environment. And although my house isn't always in the perfect condition, because it really isn't, the effort is made. I do think it's important for everyone's mental health and physical health to live in a clean home. Dust and dirt and mold, it's not good for your body, and disorder and mess is not healthy for your brain. It is really sad to see some children um, see their environments that they're living in. It's so unhealthy. 
I truly believe order to function and thrive to your fullest potential, your space needs to be clean and organized. Your environment represents your mind. If your space is messy, your brain will be messy. Now, this is not to say that a house should be free of mess. I fully support mess. We do a lot of crafts, a lot of sensory with my children, paper and paint gets everywhere. My child is free to craft whenever she pleases. My items in my house are not expensive and I'm not afraid of little mucky fingerprints all over the place. Just clean up at the end of the day or at least the next day. Just don't live in a dump. I think um, a home that is too clean can also be unhealthy because then you have that anxiety of making a mess. I don't want my children to have any anxiety of making a mess because messes can be cleaned. Um, one of my biggest tips to keeping a space clean is to live minimally. If your mess takes more than 30 minutes to clean up, then you may just simply have too much stuff. My closet is literally a perfect example of this because I'll go in my closet, I hold on to so much clothes, and then I try a bunch of things on, I don't like how they look, they end up on my floor, and then I have a big pile of laundry, and that is a huge problem. But if I reduced the amount of clothes I had, I sent them off to somebody who needs them, sent them off to Value Village, then I wouldn't um, be having to constantly clean up after my clothes. So pretty much if your kids have toys scattered all over your house, maybe eliminate some of their toys, put them in a storage bin, donate them, just have a couple things out, and then you can do a toy rotation or a clothes rotation. You can also rotate your clothes. So there's my little tip for you guys. <laughs> In addition to a clean space, you also want to focus on creating a comfortable and beautiful space within your home. I believe that the environment we live in greatly impacts our mood and well-being. So I pay close attention uh, to the aesthetics, incorporating elements that reflect our family's personality and interests. From choosing decor to arranging furniture, I strive to create a space that is inviting and cozy. Every person has a different aesthetic, so um, we need to allow each of our family members to have a space that represents them well. My husband Andy, he has this Egyptian cat that he got from the airport prior to us getting together. And when I first saw it, oof, no way was that getting displayed in the house. But now as time has passed, the cat has become an import, um, just as important as any other finish in our home. It is important to me because it is important to him. That being said, in order to have an inviting atmosphere, we don't want a clutter of airport trinkets, garage sale junk, toys, miscellaneous objects scattered all over our homes. Um, you need to choose the most treasured items, the ones that hold the most meaning. Those are the ones that you display uh, for decoration. Holding on to meaningless stuff can lead to hoarding, and that definitely will create a claustrophobic feel. Um, and it's also just more work to keep organized and clean when you have a lot of junk. Um, decorating and making a space beautiful does not need to be expensive. All of my items in my house, literally all of them, are thrifted or have been refurbished. We do not have a ton of money. And although I wish at times that my house were a little more expensive looking, I am overall very happy with the aesthetic considering the budget we had to work with. Um, you can choose your style or find some images on Pinterest that you like, and then you can slowly collect pieces that will help you reach that similar look. You do not need to go to the brick or a furniture store and get a credit card to buy all new furniture and decor to create a beautiful space. It's honestly the little things that can make a huge difference, like matching bed sheets and a nicely made bed, or toys that are nicely displayed on a shelf rather than scattered on the floor or messily thrown in a bin, or as simple as um, placemats on the table and a candle lit during supper. All those little details will make a home look aesthetic. The next thing you need to be considering if you are a homemaker is managing time. 
I develop routines and schedules that allow me to balance household chores, family responsibilities, and personal time effectively. There has been plenty of times that my husband and I will not plan the night before, and it always makes the following day so much more hectic. Without planning ahead, we are always running behind. If you know that you have to work the following day, what are you gonna do? You're gonna set your alarm, right? Maybe you're gonna pack your lunch, right? So even if you're not working, but you have plans for your family, like a family outing or you're going somewhere, you should make a list of things you need to do to prepare so that things go smoothly. Time management will become even more crucial when you have more and more children because then you're going to have to take them to daycare and school and their sports. Um, there's so much like running around as a parent. I feel like parents always have somewhere to be. So time management is a habit that you should really practice and try to get better at because as your kids get older it's just gonna get a lot harder to do so so develop the good habit now the last thing i want to talk about in today's video is personal growth and self-care while serving my family is my top priority it is also essential for me to focus on my personal growth and self-care as a homemaker i understand that taking care um, of myself allows me to better take care of others. I carve out a little bit of time for my hobbies, self-reflection, and pursuing my own interests. By nurturing my own well-being, I am better equipped to support and uplift my family. Um, so there you guys have it, my perspective on what it means to be a homemaker and how I like to serve my family. Homemaking is an honorable and fulfilling role where we have the opportunity to create a loving and nurturing environment for our loved ones. It's so much more than just the physical aspects of managing a home, but it's also about fostering that connection, creating memories, and making our families' lives just so much better. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time. Bye!